I'm going to take a minute or three and talk to you about, again, about the mind. Uh, that little voice inside your head uh, that, um, again, I was speaking to a young man in Texas years ago, and I said, that voice inside your head, and he absolutely panicked. And I said, uh, everybody has one. He said, what? I said, everybody has one. He said, you mean I'm not crazy? I said, oh, no, no. No, it's, it's quite a normal occurrence. And uh, some people have a whole cast of characters, and uh, they begin to believe that that's them. Uh, tomorrow I leave for Barcelona. My son is there in chiropractic college. There is a chiropractic convention going on there. I have not uh, taught or had a booth at a chiropractic convention in a year or so. And it's fascinating. I was just sitting here and thought, wow. If it were up to my mind, if it were up to that enculturated non-belief system, or it's a, it, it is a belief system, and it's an enculturated belief system, it's something that you have to learn. Again, the emotional world is completely learned. And if it were up to that, I would not go to Barcelona. I don't have much planned, although there are people there that I think if they find value with my work, uh, I will have more work. And, but my mind wants me to stay in this inertial state and not venture out. And it runs out and gives me every worst case scenario that it can to keep me here and not really, maybe complacent. Maybe complacent is the word. Um, it's not comfortable. Uh, it's not content. Uh, so I've got my plane ticket. I've got my railway ticket. Uh, and I head out early, early, early tomorrow morning uh, to get to Barcelona at around noon and start working on Friday. And when I do a booth, I film people. And the camera's working, the computer's working. Uh, <clears throat> and we sit and we look and see if they can see where they are on the scale. Uh, I think I talked about this before. I was at a chiropractic convention years ago, saw a man I'd gone to college with, talked to him. He talked about how much pain he was in. He'd had a severe accident. Um, and uh, one of those positive motivational sorts of people. And uh, it was just a casual conversation talking about how he'd had this horrible fall and he just couldn't get any relief from it. Uh, and he came to my booth and he said, you know, what are you doing here? And I said, well, let's, I said, I need to ask you a question first of all. He said, okay. I said, where's your life on a scale from 1 to 10? He said, 13. 13, by God, on a scale from 1 to 10. Okay, can't stay within the parameters, but also... He's in pain almost constantly, according to him, and his life is a 13. Fake it till you make it. If you're looking for fake it till you make it, it's not me. It's not my work. If you're looking to uh, look and see who's home and how to best utilize that, you may consider coming and doing a class. I heard a woman in England is coming looking for her divine essence, and uh, that kind of intrigues me because there is one. I can't interpret it further than that. I know that there's this uh, part of you that is just absolutely living in magnificence, uh, clouded over uh, most times by the enculturated medi mediocrity. But I'll uh, do these things, this video thing, <laughs> um, from Barcelona soon. Yeah, have a fun day. Uh, that's what you're on the planet for. Uh, www.mic peak performance. My dazzling new book is Noticing Fixes More Than Fixing. Dazzling.